finished doing our live. I'm going to go do the elliptical, take the doggy for her morning W. Scott's making brekkie and then pick the dog poo up. I think we're going to leave for the day. I'm excited. I love game day. The bed was somewhat made. Bed made, coffee, water, to the elliptical. Two minutes. Good job, Amanda. That's right, Scott, a new note. Okay, my note. That was the best. He's making breakfast. And then he already, look at him. Our chuck roast for later that has apple, smoked, salt, garlic powder, onion powder. Garlic powder, onion. Yep. Mmm, yum, 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 yum. And then bacon, eggs. Ooh, you got sausage? Breakfast this morning, two eggs, two pieces of bacon, water, and I'm going to put my salt. There's a little bit of pouting going on over here. It real may out. It doesn't get bacon and eggs. Olive and I are going to do a bike run this morning. She is super duper crazy. I'm going to pack because we're going to go on the trail all the way up to Whatcom Falls. I'm going to take some element with me. I had a really good question the other day. Someone asking me, they said they'd seen a lot of people promoting Element and why was there something lacking on carnivore? And my answer for myself is, well, here's the thing. I don't eat a lot because I still have a lot of Bank of Amanda going on. And so I need a little bit of a supplement. The magnesium, sodium, potassium in here is where I get it. Plus I've been working out a solid week and a half. I'm super proud of myself and I sweat a lot. So I lose a lot of sodium through sweat. And I use Element to make up for that. Scott's actually been working out with me as well, and he's been using it too, because he finds the days that he doesn't use it, he gets really bad leg cramps. Right now, Element's offering an eight pack sample pack free with any purchase. You just need to go to drinkelement.com forward slash carnivorous me. That's D R I N K L M N T dot com forward slash carnivorous me. We are heading down to game day. Scott went to go lock the door. I'm gonna drive. I'll show you guys the game when we get there. All right, so we're gonna play games and look at this amazing game table. Look how cool it's got felt down here for all the nerds. And it's got cup holders and all these little attachments and all these boards come up. Yeah, one game set up ready yes, for us. Yes, they already have a game set up for we us. We got these nice little drink holders with a uh, magnet so it stays in. That snaps in on the inside as well. So the player's desk will snap in. Either way. Goes on the outside, though. Yep, no, no, it comes on the inside, but it comes towards oh, like oh. that as a player's desk. That's and cool. And it has the same magnets on here so you can... Oh, I didn't know that that snapped together like yep. that. That's pretty awesome. So That's still, sweet. So you don't lose this inside track with yeah. this here. You still have that. That's super cool. That is really cool. Yep. So that's nice for playing board games and D&D. &D. Yeah, D &D yeah. Things. Or D&D. &D. So. Little Doom Master. I feel like we're all going to be melee and it will be great. Yes, no magic. That that was the whole point of this, right? <laughs> get, so, get out, get don't out open that one. door. <laughs> no reason to open that door, right? We're playing games, adding friends, and so food. It is New York steak. There is some peppers and onions and provolone on it. Well, this isn't much of a look at dinner, but I ate 0.8 ounces of my cheese, and then I had three ounces of the salami I had last night, and that's my dinner tonight. An odd one, but that's that's what it is. Good evening. We recently just got back from doing game day. It was a lot of fun. Scott and I love board games. We are big old nerds at heart. And honestly, I enjoy it because we get to spend time with friends and family, not behind a screen or a phone or, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with food. It's just super enjoyable. I really, really enjoyed it. The second game was getting a bit long and I was getting a little tired there, but we ended up having to come home because we got to feed the dogs. So we left around five o'clock and got home around five, no, six, 615, <laughs> something like that and fed them slightly late, but they were very excited. Annie gets super excited when we come home. I say she's my pinball 
bowling ball. She's 45 pounds of just pure muscle and she gets so excited. She just like vibrates around the front. <laughs> She's so excited when we get home. Today was a pretty good day. I don't know where our day went. feels like I got up, uh, kind of piddled around with trying to get the microphones to work for the live, did the live. We left, played games and came home. That's just kind of how things went. Um, Scott made a delicious chuck roast for dinner. I did not eat it. I wasn't feeling super good. I had the bell peppers, onions, and the, the meat down at their place, and it was delicious. However, and he cooked it in ghee, so everything that, you know, perfect. Uh, I don't think I did so well with the bell peppers. I normally don't have any kind of indigestion, but I was like burping up the onions. And I don't think it's anything that he did because he himself, Scott's friend, he follows carnivore too. I just think for me, I haven't had them in a really long time. So I think maybe those are a once in a blue moon kind of thing. Uh, but it was delicious. I mean, the meal was delicious. It was deconstructed Philly cheesesteaks. Uh, <laughs> anywho, so I got home and I'm like, eh, the idea of eating more beef and stuff. I'm like, Shh. so... I had more charcuterie. I am going to have to be better. I have had nitrates for breakfast and dinner, breakfast and dinner, breakfast and dinner for like three days in a row. And it's just more than I want to eat. <laughs> I need to take a step back and get back to whole meats this next week. That's okay. It is better to do that than eat off. And I think that's a good trade off. So I like having those extra things in our house because if I am not feeling so great and wanting to eat something, then I have a go-to to use, you know? And so I strongly recommend having go-tos in your house. Scott keeps the chicken wings because we buy the party packs that are individual size and I eat one when I have it and he'll cut them up and leave them in the freezer because he can quickly, we can quickly fall those and that's an entire meal. If things fall apart, well, then we have some chicken wings and I usually have some of the sauce that I make in the refrigerator. So I just have to warm that up and boom, you know, emergency meal ready to go. Well, I'm tired. I, I'm not sure if it's just the entire week has added up and I've been going, 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 and I don't feel like I've gotten much respite or relaxation in the evening. So I'm trying to do a lot of different things and be productive. So tomorrow I think I might take it easy. It's still a workout day and I will still do that. But I think I'm gonna take it slightly easier. Sorry, I'm trying not to make my yawns contagious. But I am after this going to go get in my pajamas and I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> uh, what else? Oh, I weighed myself. I lost two more pounds. I was 251. You've probably seen it in my food log. I have it on there because the scale sends it to Apple the Apple Health and the Apple Health sends it to my food app. And so just, it's a trickle down effect. I'm going to be very curious about this next week. The reason is this week has been like the first week I've been consistent about it. Uh, plus I've had a lot of nitrates. <laughs> I've been so consistent about working out and moving. There is a little bit more inflammation in the body. Just a lot of times when you first start working out, so over the next week or two, be curious how, as things settle, if the weight loss progresses a little faster. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Down is always better than up, right? Yeah, and I mean, I've been stuck for a while, so I'm right about to get to the 240s, so yes to that. And then the 230s, and then, and then, and then, and then. <laughs> Scott had a good conversation with me tonight about forgiving myself and I realize I've forgiven myself about a lot of things. But there is still this like little acorn inside that I have not quite forgiven myself about just my overall past and the choices I made. Like I've forgiven a lot. And sometimes I let it go and the other times I pick it back up and then I have to remind myself to let it go. But we cannot change the past. There is nothing we can do. We all will have regrets of some form, kind, big, small, whatever. However, 
it can't change anything. And it can't change the fact that, you know, I had gained a little bit of weight over that six or seven months. Um, I think, yeah. And that now I'm getting close back down to my lowest weight that I've been in a year and a half. And that is okay. And he also reminded me, I don't owe anybody else anything. Not that I don't appreciate you guys very much, but if I lose two pounds a week for the rest of, you know, the next year, it's two pounds a week. I sh should not and will not allow an external force shame me for not losing three pounds or four pounds or what the other expectations are. And that also brings me to, how do I word this? Society says to be, I don't want to say a good person, but to have good character. You usually you tend not to be overweight. If you're overweight, you don't have good character for the most part. You know, there, there's always the outliers. But as a whole, just the way people are viewed, overweight people are viewed. And I wholeheartedly disagree with that. Our value has nothing to do with what we weigh. In the least. Not at all. We're all humans. We all have value. And it doesn't matter if you're 500 or you're 120 pounds. It doesn't change how much we're worth. But because it's regurgitated so much, we have to keep reminding ourselves that we are worthy of where we're at. And yes, our decisions got us where they got us, but it doesn't make us bad people. It just means we chose, we chose a path and it ended us where we were. But it doesn't mean that's where we have to stop. So Christmas is coming up this week. And I want every single one of you to know, if you eat off, it is okay. It is not going to be the end of the world. If you can stay on track, that would, I can tell you, make you feel better because then you're gonna be proud of yourself. But if you happen to eat off for Christmas, don't let that one falter completely derail you, okay? Someone was saying something the other day. They're like, well, what was it? it was something along the lines of like, well, if I eat one cookie, then well, I might as well eat them all. And don't get me wrong. I've had that, that thinking my entire life around food, but it actually does matter. It really does matter. So don't let that one meal, if you falter with it, just imagine it's just like in your journey of whatever keto, carnivore, low carb health, whatever you're doing, I don't care if you're doing veganism, whatever you're doing to get healthy, it's just like a stutter step. You just kind of stuttered a little bit, stopped for half a brief second, and then you're gonna keep going on your journey, okay? You have the strength and ability in you to do this. And the number one thing is take small bites out of things. How do you eat a mammoth one bite at a time? Like that's my whole like logo, the mammoth, because mammoths are bigger than elephants or well, I guess I should say we're bigger than elephants. And sometimes these journeys, they are like eating a mammoth. They are large. We cannot swallow the whole thing and don't be upset at ourselves. If we try to swallow the whole thing and then get upset, we didn't swallow the whole thing and think we're a failure because we're not. Anywho, I appreciate you guys so very much. Have a wonderful Tuesday and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.